Welcome to Frost Astrophotography. In this video, we're going to image and take a look at the Monkey Head Nebula. This is, uh, for me, one of those objects that I selected just due to the fact that in between two other objects there was some time and I did not have any possibilities of imaging anything else or the time to look anything else up. So this project is uh, fairly limited with I think it was four or five hours of data in total for SHO filters and let's see what we can do with that in uh, processing in PixInsight. I'm going to click the plus here to add another target and I'm going to add the NGC 2174. You will have to excuse the resolution because I'm not using full screen on this remote desktop when switching back and forth between computers. So six nine forty six. And twenty thirty one eight. You can see that is a, a, a rather low south uh, transit for this object. That's why I'm capturing it during a, a limited uh, amount of time. So the monkey head nebula, I've calculated that I want to image this for about four and a half hours. So I'm going to slew to the target, center on the target, start guiding. I'm going to autofocus on start and on filter change. And on this target, I also want to, let's set it to 80 minutes. Now I have four and a half hours. We're going to start with some HA frames. At bin two with dither at 300. So I'm going to add a 
couple of rows here. I'm going to add the oxygen three and the sulfur two filters. And stacking those up gave us five hours. So that's too much. Uh, We have four and a half, now it's four and ten. So maybe 16 because we also have some uh, refocusing to do and we are doing filter changes here. So we're not going to refocus after elapsed time this time because we're doing a filter change after 20 and 16 and 16 and we will do a refocus in Nina after that. So let's take a look in PixInsight on the processing steps of the Monkey Head Nebula using the 4XX palette. I ended up with 18 S2, 20 HA, and 16. 03 uh, a total of 54 five minute light frames and the total integration time was four and a half hours i didn't have super conditions this uh, was a, a secondary object i would say that I used in between other objects just to fill out the time. But then I thought I would try the 4x6 palette on this uh, target. So the integrated uh, light frames for each filter was subject to a dynamic crop. Not much, but just a little to eliminate those stacking artifacts and black lines that you might get. I then followed my standard linear processing steps. And that includes the uh, dynamic crop, uh, as I mentioned, the dynamic background extraction, uh, the linear fit, and I usually use the HA for reference for that. Uh, I now use a blur exterminator and noise exterminator. You could use uh, deconvolution instead if you don't have the blur exterminator. And you could use multi scale linear transformation if you don't have noise exterminator. If you want to know the details on using uh, deconvolution and the uh, multi-scale linear transformation process, check out my four-part uh, PixInsight processing tutorial and start with the uh, linear processing. I'm going to show you an example here what happens uh, after these steps. Now the image on the left here is the uh, stacked master HA and that is only been subje subjected to the um, dynamic crop. And the one on the right here has been subjected to the Dynamic background extraction, linear fit, blur exterminator, and noise exterminator. And we can zoom in on some part of the image. This uh, bright star, for example. And you can see a big difference here between these two images. Like you see, uh, on the image here, we have uh, eliminated a, a lot of the noise. Before starting work in the non-linear phase of the processing, you need to stretch the image. 
Now this can be done in several different ways. You have a lot of scripts available today. You have the uh, easy soft stretch, for example, uh, in the easy processing suite. And you have also the uh, generalized hyperbolic stretched uh, script that you can download and install. But I prefer to do it manually using the histogram transformation tool. First of all, we have to remove the screen transfer function. As you can see, it turns almost black here. So we're gonna open the histogram transformation. We're going to select the image that we are going to stretch. And we are going to take the middle slider here and drag it to the left and apply that to the image. So you can see that we are getting some of the signal here. We are going to repeat that by resetting the tool and drag this slider over again and apply that to the image. We're getting more details now. We are repeating this process, but you don't want to drag this too long. Uh, you don't want to clip any of the actual signal or data. Apply that once more, reset it. Now, uh, it's hard to tell where the actual data begins here. I'm going to try a bit more and reset the tool. And then I'm going to reset the black point on this image. And that means dragging the left lever to the right here. But we don't want to clip any uh, of the data. So be careful not to uh, exceed uh, number one here. When I said one, uh, it's fine to exceed the number one, but you don't want to exceed uh, 1%. Reset the tool once more. You can see that we have some more data to uh, bring out. So we're dragging this over again. And we are adjusting this. You can see that we're only at 0 0.0008%. And that's fine. So this is basically uh, something that you will uh, pick up and learn uh, with time. But you can see that we're bringing out some faint details of the HA data here. And I think this is this is pretty good. I think we're going to stop here. We are now in the linear phase. So starting with the three uh, manually stretched images, I used star exterminator as a first process. So I would get three starless images of my three filter masters and three star images for each of my filters. One good thing about the star exterminator is that you can use the process batch here. So you can specify output directories and you can select input files and let that process uh, without you sitting and watching the screen. This is helpful if you have a somewhat older computer like I do and the star exterminator takes quite a long time to finish. So I ended up with three starless images. Now you might see that these look uh, very nice uh, without any uh, background noise. 
and that is of course not the way they uh, turn out when you do this so i'm going to open the ha version of the unedited starless uh, image and that looks something like this you can see that you have some background gradients left and to tackle that i used a range mask that i created with the process of um, range selection and i adjusted the blurriness fuzziness of this mask not to have any sharp lines and then applied that to the image like you see here and i inverted it because now it is protecting the background you don't want that you want it to protect the nebulosity of course remove show mask and simply use curves transformation in rgb mode and you can open up a preview if you want to and you can drag this down something like that and now you have an image without the gradient backgrounds to care about So the next step is to combine these images into what you want. Now you can use pixel math to combine in SHO, for example, and that is the standard Hubble palette. And that looks something like this when you combine them. You could also combine in HOO and then you assign uh, H to red and O to green and blue. You don't use uh, S data in that blend, although there are variants of that, of course, as well. So the HOO combination looks something like this. I was not happy with uh, any of them, even though a um, Classic SHO need to be adjusted using SCNR to remove some of this green. Uh, you normally also invert it to uh, handle uh, magenta stars. Now we have this in starless, so I'm guessing that this won't do much. Uh, and now we are looking like the beginning of a classic SHO integration or palette. But I thought I would try the new 4XX palette because Polyman Astro has released a new script that makes this process much, much easier than it was before using long pixel math formulas. Now the Forex X, or some people just call it the Forex palette, is a blend, I would say, uh, on the SHO and HOO, or a special blend of SHO, you could say. So I have enabled and downloaded the script. And that pops up. It is called the Forex X Palette Utility. And you select options. You want to use two channels uh, without the uh, Sulfur 2, or you want to use three channels with the Sulfur 2. You can also um, select if you want to just combine starless images or if you want to combine star images as well to get 4xx stars i thought i'd try that as well so you're going to select the starless images and let me see s2 starless and ct stands for curves transformation because i've 
corrected the background on that. H A and O3. And I've also uh, collected uh, the star images when using star exterminator. Don't forget to check that option. So I have the S2 stars, I have the HA stars, and I have the O3 stars. So now that I have specified the uh, starless images for each filter and the star images for each filter, I simply click execute. And there we have it. Uh, you get two extra images here, and these are used to make the special blend of palette. You can close those. You get uh, the forex stars, as you can see here. That is a combination of my three star images, and you get the forex palette. Uh, combination of images. Now I think this is uh, pretty nice. Uh, you compare it to the SHO here and you can compare it to the HOO. Now I must add that the script actually adds a few steps of manipulation of the image such as curves transformation and contrasts. And that is not applied when using pixel math to combine HOO, for example, or SHO. You can see that we are lacking in contrast here, but that's fine. So with this as a starting point, I was wondering on what I would like to do. I felt that this area was fine, but I wanted to have a bit more bluish color. I didn't want the traditional 4XX palette. So I made a couple of color masks. And if you want to manipulate the blue palette for 4XX or SHO images, you make a cyan color mask. Apply that to the image and you can see that everything is protected but this middle area that I want to manipulate. So remove the mask show and open up curves transformation. Select the blue channel. You can also open up a preview if you want to and I just want to slightly increase the blue here. If I increase it a lot, you can see that it is very, very blue. If I drag it down, it will be very, very green. But just a slight improvement of the blue. Something like that. I think that really pops out to me. So this is what I started with uh, in the non-linear processing steps. I then followed my normal processing routine for the uh, non-linear phase. And that includes to do multiscale linear transformation to bring out some details, unsharp mask to sharpen the image, and finally, TGV denoise to remove some of the noise in the actual nebulosity here. And so I ended up with this. Now we're going to check, first of all, for the details. You see that the image on the left here is not as sharp as this one. It has been even 
though it is slight and subtled. This has been sharpened. We can also take a look at the noise here. You can see in this image that we have some noise left and in the image to the right here there is not much uh, noise left in the image. So TGV works out fine I would say. All that is left to do now is to combine this uh, 4xx uh, starless uh, image with the 4xx stars. This is the 4xx stars image that I got from the script earlier. But even though that uh, these stars have been reduced somewhat using the blur exterminator in the linear phase. I wanted the stars to be even smaller. So I actually just made a copy of the stars and used curse transformation to slightly, just slightly reduce the stars. As you can see on in this image to the right here. So slight star reduction and then use uh, pixel math with the formula here stars and starless and you add these uh, images uh, together and I uh, ended up with the image that you can see here. So this is the special blend slightly adjusted 4xx palette of the monkey head nebula using the 4xx slightly reduced stars. Keep in mind that this is only four and a half hours of exposure. I'm guessing that we could bring out a lot more details in uh, this uh, object with more data. It would also be interesting to have access to another telescope with a higher focal length to really uh, try to image this interesting area here uh, of the nebulosity. I'm not quite able to do that with my uh, simple EvoStar ATED at 510 millimeter focal length. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you like it please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're not already doing so. If you want to support me and the work with these videos there is an option listed in the video description. Until the next video I wish you have clear skies.